Okay, here we are in Photoshop. This is a finished file that I did that I let render for a long time. It, the lighting situation is a little different than what we ended up with in the previous lecture, but that's okay. I'm going to take my raw renderings and show you how they got to this point. The raw rendering, by the way, looks like this. Okay, so we add some people in, we add a little bit of atmospherics, we change the lighting very slightly. Really, this is this is all very subtle, subtle changes going on here. Okay, so it's hardly even noticeable, but it adds that little finishing touch. So we'll get to that point together. You can see that I have a lot of crazy layers going on, but it I'm going to break it all down for you. So it makes a lot more sense. So let's start a new file, and what we always do is, after we save out all our render channels, we go to... Photoshop, go to scripts, load files into stack, and then we select all of our render channels. So in my renderings folder here, I saved them out as 16-bit TIFFs. That's so I have a little more leeway with my, my bit depth, okay? Especially on the Z depth channel, we want a lot of depth there so that we can change our range, and I'll show you why. So I'm grabbing these TIFFs. All these will be loaded as layers. Okay, so they all load into here, and then we just hit OK. You'll see each of my render channels loading as a layer. Drag it over here. Okay, so we can turn off all of these, and we want the... Now there's the original RGB, and then there's the RGB with the effects overlaid. So those post effects we talked about with the bloom and the glare, this one has it, this one doesn't. Okay, we want the one with it, because... They're nice, they're subtle, they look good. We're gonna leave them. If you didn't wanna use them, you could put this layer, or like for example, create a mask here. Invert the mask so it's totally blocked out. But then get a brush and paint white back into that mask. So that glare goes away, this glare goes away, this bloom goes away, glare. Okay, so you could selectively include or exclude glare versus no glare, okay, if you wanted to do that. Now, what we're going to do, what I've told you with the render channels, I want to keep this pretty brief because I'm going to keep it in one video. So let's use the refraction channel as an example. So we rendered out this refraction channel. It looks like this. It shows everywhere where there's refraction in our scene. If we put this to linear dodge, you'd see that it's basically doubling the refraction in all those areas. So on off okay so now the pool is really bright so and the interior is really bright now if we liked that effect we could again create a mask for it invert the mask so nothing is showing through right it's all black so that refraction channel is no longer showing but then we could take white again and paint back in areas that we like Okay, so say we just wanted the pool to be extra bright. Paint black over this for the mask and white over the pool for the mask. And now we have just the pool glowing more. And say we want that effect to be a little more subtle and not double it, but just add a little bit. Could do that. Okay, and that actually looks pretty good. Now, I'm not going to use any of these other channels, but if you do want to let's say enhance the specular or something you could put that up here and put it to linear dodge add it on top of itself and that's doubling the specular in those areas and again if you thought I only like it right here then you could mask out everything else and paint back in so that only that is affecting okay I'm not gonna go through all that but that's how you can use those ooh I do like I do like some of this Okay, so down here, this could be nice, right? So that specular kind of looks good. Turn it up and down. Okay, anyway, you can mess with this for hours. Let me show you how to use the Z-depth a little bit. So there's our Z-depth pass, and you can see it's going over from 0 to 200 feet. It's going from white to black. Okay, I'm going to invert it by hitting Control i and then I'm going to put it to linear dodge. 
So you can see it's basically adding a foggy look to my scene. Now I'm going to adjust that foggy look by doing an adjustment layer. Layer, new adjustment, levels. Okay, and I want that levels to only affect the underlying layer, which is the z-depth. And I do that by clicking here. Or by holding down Alt and clicking between the two layers. You can see this little arrow appears. That means it's only affecting the layer below it. So, when it's showing me this histogram, it's actually showing me a histogram of only this z-depth layer. Okay, so I want to turn down some of the effect of it by sliding the black in. Okay, so you can see that this looks like fog getting further and further away from me, right? And all that's doing is adjusting the white and blacks of the Z-Depth channel below me. So I want it about right here. And then I want to turn down the effect overall. And now, so all that's doing is adding a little bit of haze to the back of my screen to create a little bit of atmosphere and a little bit of depth, right? And now the last thing I want to do to the Z-Depth is new adjustment layer, hue saturation. Make sure it's only affecting my Z-Depth. We can put it on colorize and make it really saturated so we can see it. And then just put it to a color you like for your fog. So if you want your fog to be deep blue like that, you can put it there. I actually want it to be warm as if it's catching haze from the sun that is over here. Okay, so that's that's the right color. Uh, maybe this color. Okay, yeah, this color. So it's kind of this orange. I want it to be a little lighter, though, and a little less saturated. So maybe right around there is the right level of lightness. But I want it to be actually less saturated. So we know we're in the right color range, but you need to also be in the right level of brightness and saturation. Okay, now, so if we just turn off this layer, you can see the difference it makes, okay? So maybe it wants to be a little more subtle. Now another thing we can do with it is jump it to a new layer. Okay, so now it's doubled, but we're not, we're actually gonna use this one. This is the one with the effects still on it. We're gonna put another one on top of it, a copy of it. And then we're gonna set this one to multiply. Okay, so that's what it looks like. If I put it on normal, it looks like this. Let's leave it on normal as we adjust. New adjustment levels. And all we're gonna try and do is darken up this foreground so that it helps frame our image even better. Okay, so this is where the extra bit depth comes into play with that TIFF. Because if it was just a JPEG, then this stuff would start getting really noisy up here. You can see it looks really bad right now, but when I kind of lock this in, it will work. Okay, so let's just, we just want to make this one part of my scene darker. Okay, one interesting thing that I'm just finding is that if I put that layer layers adjustment on this thing, it didn't, it, it remained kind of uh, pixelated and segmented. If I go to image adjust levels and actually burn this in like that, when I hit OK, now it's all soft and smooth again. So that's taking advantage of that full 16-bit depth adjustment there. So if we now put this back to multiply, you can see that it's now darkening the front of our scene. Turn it on and off. Okay, so that really helps frame so we're not focusing on anything up here. It's still there. You can still see it. And you could turn up and down this. So somewhere like right there is nice. And the last thing you can do is say layer, new adjustment, hue saturation. So we talked about how the highlights are kind of the warmer color and then it's really cool in the shadows. So for these shadows up front that we're creating here, we can go to colorize and set them to kind of a deep blue-ish right around there. Make sure we're only affecting this z-depth channel that's right below us and then turn down the saturation a little bit 
Not too much though. Okay. So that's adding that. Really helping to frame this. Maybe turn it down a little bit. So it's nice and subtle. Okay, there you go. So that's kind of the uh, using the atmosphere, using some of our render channels, and getting a nice image. And the next one, we'll just tie it all together. We'll add in a little person there. Just do some simple compositing, and then we'll call it good.